right? You make it feel like you're their voice and then you give them a sounding board to attack their enemy. So how do you do it on YouTube? I do a one hour live stream talking about something. Then I let people jump on my live stream and they not just can talk like they're crazy about that particular issue, but you know, they're going to spin off into whatever other issue they want to talk about. Now I've given them a sounding board. This is one of the most powerful things the internet has done. When I was coming up, you could not express yourself on media because media was controlled by gatekeepers and they knew exactly what you was going to say on before you got on it. There was no media that you could express yourself. So then we first came out with like the blog sites. So the newspapers had the place where you could comment in the chat. Then that turned into what we got now where we got the live streams. But what we found is that most people want to express themselves because why? I can't say to them what I feel at work. Nobody in my community gives a damn about what I'm talking about. So I can find a community on the internet where people will listen to what I got to say. And when you listen to what they got to say, you realize why well, nobody don't want to listen to what they got to say. Why? Because they ain't saying nothing. But if you can tolerate that, listening to a bunch of people all day that ain't talking about nothing, you can make yourself a lot of money by being their sounding board, giving them an opportunity to attack what they believe their enemy is. But it's the enemy you gave them. Right. It's not their real enemy. It's the enemy you gave them to, to try to determine this, why you don't like your life. Let's keep going. So you just keep agitating your group, right, with negative news around their enemy, and then you continue to attack their enemy verbally. So you see this on YouTube. God built a really, really big YouTube platform. Every day he has something negative to say about black women. Right? Behind the scenes, he had five children with black women. But he figured out the master key. Take this group of people that don't come from good families. They have a low socioeconomic status. Their life in America is a result of their family failing literally for generations. They're very frustrated. They're mad. They don't see a way out. They're not skilled. They don't have really big hopes for the future. And I tell them that the direction and the, where they should point their anger and their disappointment is at black women. And every day I jump on YouTube and I got another article about something negative around black women. And I attack these black women verbally, give them all kind of weird names, yada, yada, yada. Reverse it. Do the same thing with black men. Reverse it. Get a, build a white audience, call myself a conservative, and feed them negative news around black people. It's funny how they don't do it around, they don't feed them negative news around Mexican people. They don't feed them negative news around Jewish people. They don't feed them negative news around Asian people. Why? Because that won't work. But I can do that to black folks, and now I can get them to believe, well, the reason why you don't like your life is because of black people. Do the same thing. What's Rush Limbaugh? Get on the radio, do three hours a day to an audience and tell them the reason why you don't like your life is because of liberals in D.C. You live literally thousands of, of miles away from D.C. But this is the reason why you don't like your life. And then I agitate them every day for three hours a day, Monday through Friday, around negative news. And I attack these people verbally. God made himself wealthy off of that. He was a guy that was on welfare before he figured that out. That's a fact. The group will eventually promote you as your leader because in their mind, they think you think like them. So what did I talk about before? Those women thought I thought like them. For some reason in their mind, they thought David doesn't like black men just like I don't like black men. That's incorrect because I actually like black people. And I've had issues with black people and I still like black people. I don't have disdain for black folks. I wasn't raised that way and that's not how I think. But they're just looking for somebody to verbalize what they believe and what they've been taught is wrong with their life. If you got an issue with black folks, that's your issue. You need to go to a therapist. I'm not the person that's going to allow you to platform that and talk about that, whether it's black men or black women. We're going to talk about real issues, but I don't do this. You can come on my platform and just talk negative about black folks because you just want to get something off your chest. Not doing that. I don't need your money that bad. And I don't need to be popular to you that bad. It's not that important to me. Right. But it allows other people to do that because why is that important to them? So I say they go ahead and do it. So these people will promote you as your leader. Because in their mind, they think you think the way they think. And so that's your job to convince your group that you think the same way they think, even if you know you don't. Right? Even if you know in your mind that like Limbaugh was sitting in Palm Beach popping pills, right, tricking off with prostitutes in the DR, but he convinced his audience that he was a conservative and he was speaking for them. When in reality, he was a drug addict. That's a fact. But it don't matter because he was able to convince them using persuasion that I think just like y'all think. And I'm your voice and I'm not going to let these liberals run over us. I'm not going to let them take over America. People saying, well, he should run for politics. Come on, man, be serious. Right. 
Let's be serious. Now they're saying Candace Owens should run for politics. Be serious. Like, let's be serious about this stuff. So in reality, it's a con. It's all a con. And I'm not against the con, right? I know the con. However, it can be lucrative with the right audience. So it is a con, but there's game in being a con man because it's such thing called con game. So it is a con. However, with the right audience, especially in this environment we're living now where everybody can create a platform for themselves, it can be lucrative with the right audience. As long as you don't do the wrong thing like Andrew Tate or like Kanye West, you just have to know what groups to attack, right? Kanye West went after the wrong group. Andrew Tate went after the wrong group in the wrong way because they haven't taken down some of the, the red pill guys for doing the same thing he's doing, but he went after a little bit too aggressively. So they had to pull him back, right? But it's a con. It's 100% a con. You got a chick on YouTube now as an ex-prostitute. Not down to her, but she's ex-prostitute, escort, whatever you want to call her. Then she tried to jump on YouTube and talk about um, white, white people and how bad they were, yada, yada, yada. Then she fell out with that group. Now she's talking about black men. It's a con. Not mad at it or get your money. Because I'm not against the game. I'm for the game. But I see straight through it because I'm really lacing this game. But it's a con. She's making more money now than she ever would have made prostitute. Because she don't know how to prostitute because she ain't been taught nothing. So I'm happy that she's able to do something and get out of the prostitution space because she was never going to make no money doing that. So I'm happy for her. I want women to use their brain and not their body. That's just me. Everybody different. Right? Let's go to the next one. The audience don't know it's a con. Their anger, emotions, disappointment is real. And you give them something to, to direct those emotions at. So why did I show you the video at the beginning of this particular uh, production? It's because the audience wants to believe it's real. They want to believe it's real. The audience really wants to believe that somebody's going to defund the police and we're going to be unpoliced. Most ridiculous assumption I've ever heard in my life. They didn't want to believe that. So now they have something to rally around, right? This woman talking about, I'm a trained Marxist. How? Were you trained by the Chinese or the Cubans? Because they're the only Marxists in the world. So how were you a trained Marxist inside the United States? But she knew what she needed to do to be the enemy of this group of people to get money from another group of people. But I would have if I was ever sitting down, I'm a trained Marxist. My question is, who trained you? You, you must have got trained in China. You didn't get trained in China. You must have got trained in Cuba. You didn't get trained. At, well, then who trained you? Because there are no Marxists inside the United States. So you're telling me some people inside the United States that's shopping at retail outlets, that's paying rent, that own private property, that own cars, right? That believe they own things, that they have private property ownership, that they got private ownership of objects. They're the Marxists that train you how to be a Marxist. That's not Marxism. But because I know that, that's not going to work on me. But I know that it was a con. It was a con from the gate. And she made a lot of money with that con. She figured out, how can I be the voice of a bunch of people who economically been disenfranchised, come, don't come from really solid families, their family hasn't been successful inside the United States. I'm going to make them think I'm their voice. That's going to allow me to appeal to another people. And the fact that somebody's putting out a documentary about her this week it really shows how important she is because they're not putting out a documentary about me. They're not putting out a documentary about Miss uh, Miss Cherie. We actually doing real work to improve people's lives. They're not putting out a documentary about Erica Williams. We're doing a real work to improve people's lives in the community. They're putting out a, a documentary about her, which does what? Shows how important she actually is. So it worked, right? And everybody knew it was a con except the people that needed to use that to rally their audience. I don't know not one black person that believed in BLM. I know who they got their money from. It wasn't black folks. Black people don't have that kind of money to make somebody get $10 million over here. And the black folks don't have that kind of money. So I know who gave them their money. And it wasn't black folks. So the audience does not know what's a con, but their emotions, angst, disappointment is real. You got to give them something to direct those emotions at. That's why you get up here every day and you give them something else to direct their emotions at. Right? Won't this... This is what this black person did. This is what this black woman did. This is what this black man did. You know, Lizzo, yada, yada, yada. You know, it used to be LeBron James. You know, just, just give them something to direct those emotions at and they'll be on your team. 
So this is why when you deal with this audience, you get borderline hysteria, right? So when you deal with these audiences, and if you actually go to these channels and you listen to people talk, you get borderline hysteria. When you listen to the people that's part of my community talk, you get rational, intelligent conversation. Why? Because I don't play that. I don't play that stuff, right? So you got to realize that this is why when these people come on and they conversate, it's hysteria. It's a lot of rambling. It's people arguing back and forth. It's people just making up stuff as, as, as fast as they can. That's why I keep asking people, you get on this channel, you say one, two, three, I'm going to ask you, why do you believe that? You say, I don't like this. Well, what do you like? Because my question is that if you can't engage in constructive thought, you're going to fall back into the hysteria. And you're going to let somebody else direct your ideas and direct your actions. You have to learn how to think. All this free thinker stuff is fake. The world wouldn't move the way it moved if everybody was so much as a free thinker as they say they are. They're not free thinkers. Right? So you got to realize is that I can tell one of these audiences a mile away by listening to the people in their audience and how you get this hysteria. I know how this audience was built. I know what it's about. And I know nine times out of 10, it's a con. The person running is the only person that don't know what's a con. It's the only person that knows is a con. Everybody else don't know it. Right? That's just how it goes. So here's an example, right? A few months ago, I did a video on Cam Newton. And his little situation, how I didn't agree with it, yada, 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 how Cam Newton's a big trick, which is true. And how I didn't like the fact that his life wasn't a representation of what he was saying women needed to be doing. He wasn't living that, right? And a woman came in when I allowed people to jump on the mic. And she said, Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent are responsible for black people being in the PNH culture. So you know me being her, I need you to get some context to that. I'm not going to do the hysteria with you. I said, well, what is the reference point of black people being in the PNH culture if they themselves don't come out of a PNH culture? What's the reference point? Because we, we're on the internet, we got tricks calling people simps. So my question is, what's your reference point of a PNH culture? Then she told me it was Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent. Well, Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent ain't never been peas in a day of their life. They ain't never sent not one girl. They not known on not one blade. They not known on not one carpet. Right? Don't nobody know them to actually be in a lifestyle of P and nation. These dudes are entertainers. Snoop, supposedly from Long Beach, right, from the 20s, 50 Cent from, from uh, Queens, New York, doing what he was doing. They never been inside any P and H communities, so nobody know them for that. So I don't care what rap video they do. That's that's entertainment. But in her mind, that was a justification for what she was saying with Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent. That's the borderline hysteria that I'm talking about. When you actually investigate what these people say, it don't even add up to something that makes sense. But this is the story that they're playing inside their head. And they have people on YouTube telling them, well, you know, this is what's wrong, yada, yada, yada. The reason why you don't like your life is because of black people and we in a PH culture. And the person telling you this don't have a reference point for PH culture. What you know about it, something you read in a book? You ain't never been on a blade. You ain't never been on a track and you ain't never been on the carpet. Now, they might know a bunch of individual prostitutes. But they don't know no P and H's and they showed on no P and H culture. But we live in a world where people watch DVDs and documentaries and they think they know something. Right. But if you actually put them around that type of stuff, they won't be comfortable. So then how would you get exposure to it to know what you're talking about? Let's keep going. So the downside of this particular strategy. Right. Because everything got an upside and a downside. Your audience is often unstable and angry. And when you don't do what they want you to do, they attack you. It's the same thing happened to me. Those women that thought I was going to sit there and keep talking about black men and the, the red pill, blue pill, and whatever, whatever on their behalf wasn't going to happen that way. But that's what they thought. So when they realized I wasn't going to do that, then they want to get angry. Now, they never comment on none of my market-related stuff. As soon as I did something they didn't like, they write six and seven paragraphs in my comments. I told them, you need to get on down the road. Because I'm just not for you. That's cool. I'm not for you. Because I'm not your attack dog. I'm going to repeat myself. We're not from the same neighborhood. We don't claim the same thing. Right? If my homegirl who's from my neighborhood, if she got a problem, I got a problem. You, if you got a problem, you need to figure that out with your people. That don't have nothing to do with me. Now, I will address things I don't like, like that's going on in the world. But it's not my job to attack, right, people for you. That's not my job. And that's not how I'm going to promote myself on, on YouTube. 
I'm not doing that for you. You need to do that for yourself with your people. Build your own crew out and y'all attack who y'all got a problem with. Right? I'm not a freelance attacker for you. So you got to realize when you build this type of strategy out, right, your audience is often unstable and angry. And when you don't do what they want, they will attack you, right? So I want you to really understand that. When you don't do what they want, they're going to attack you. And that's what I want you to understand. Okay? So here's another example. Black men are terrible and you should not deal with them. Attracts angry and unstable crowd. Eventually, they turn on the leaders of that movement. Sorry for the typo. And the leaders flee to our turn to platform. So I saw this happen. Bunch of women in response to what the other guy was saying about black women being the worst people in the world. They created this narrative that black men are terrible. You should not deal with them. OK, cool. So what they did was they created this world online with just black women. Right. That's what they did. Created a world online with just black women. And then what happened is they started attacking each other, which is unusual because I thought black men was the issue. As soon as we got black men off the uh, channel, I got black men off the scene and it was just black women, all of a sudden y'all started attacking each other. Why? Because you attracted an angry and unstable crowd. So what did that angry and unstable crowd start to do? They started turning on the leaders of the movement. And those women left YouTube, I think they're on Clubhouse now. Because they got ran off of YouTube. Because the energy that they corralled to try to become successful and popular on YouTube, it turned around and attacked them because these people are hysterical. They're emotional. They're unstable. They have issues going on that happened way before you ever met them. And you're thinking you can control these people. You can't. Many of these people need serious psychological help. They need a therapist. Like a lot of us black folks need therapy. I've gone to therapy. I have a mindset counselor that I work with, right? Uh, she's been on the channel. Helped me a lot. So when you try to corral these people and you can't control them because you don't know how to control these folks, over time, they get uncontrollable. They start coming after you. Because you never should have did what you did, but to try to become successful on the internet, you utilize a strategy that you didn't really know what you was doing. And then once you realize what you was involved in, it got too much for you, so you fled. Okay, cool. So here's what I want you to understand. This is wrestlers. These are professional wrestlers. They know behind the scenes that it's all an act, right? They sitting backstage working out, dude getting his hair done. You got guys doing makeup. They talking about how they're going to run the routine because it's, 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 chore it's, it's choreographed, right? They're not out there just freelancing. It's not Greco-Roman wrestling with somebody really trying to get a three-count pin. That's not what professional wrestling is. So behind the scenes, they know it's folk, it's fake. Many of the top YouTuber people, right, when they get together, they all know that it's fake. Because con men and con women can recognize each other. So they know that you build this big, big platform talking about that. They know you know what you're doing because if you didn't, you wouldn't have been able to build the platform. You wouldn't have been able to keep it going. So then when they get around each other, they know it's all a con. But the audience don't know it's a con. The audience really think this stuff is real. And this is what they buy into. Just like the guy at the beginning of this video, he thinks wrestling is real. No way in the world wrestling is real. They kill each other. They really was trying to do that to each other. But he needs wrestling to be real to justify what he's watching. Got to be real. And he's not going to hear nothing to the contrary. Okay, cool. So you got to understand, the main characters know it's fake. Their job is just to convince you. So that's why a lot of times the main characters start beefing with each other. The people, that's the audience, they're the only ones that's caught up in it. Because the main characters know it's fake. They just doing this to continue to re-engage their audience. Okay, let's keep going. So I'm going to repeat myself again. I can teach you how to persuade anyone in the world. However, can you live with what you have to do? Right? I can teach you how to persuade anybody in the world. The question is, can you live with it? Can you go to bed at night knowing that you're lying to people? Some people don't have no issue with that. Politicians do it every day. Right? Can you go to bed at night knowing that you're giving people a false narrative and you're benefiting from it? And when you get done with this, they're going to be in the exact same position that they was in when they started. If you don't have no issue with that, you can build the biggest YouTube platform in the world because you're giving people really what they want. Most people want an excuse for their life. They want to sit on YouTube for three hours and complain about their life and why it's somebody else's fault. 
They want a place to complain about their life, even they're not going to do nothing about it. Like as we show with the, the commercial, uh, the, the political commercial, people had a problem with the commercial when I asked them, well, what's your issues? Three or four people answered. Everybody else just started being quiet. Same thing. What's the problem with black? You got people doing five-hour live streams about black culture, right? Well, where does the culture come from that you got a problem? I don't know. I just got a problem with it. Well, what culture do you want to follow? I don't know. I just want to talk about black culture. So as long as you keep giving them a platform to, you know, emote and, and get into a hysteria and argue, that's their emotional release for the day. Come back in two more days, do it over and over again. Right. And then you can build a big platform by doing that or being the voice of their angst and their disappointment and their anger. Let me show you all what y'all should be mad about today. No solutions. You should just be mad because I say so. Not you should be mad. And here's a solution. No, no solutions. You just be mad today because I say so. You can make a lot of money doing that in, on this YouTube. You just got to be cool with what you're doing. And if you're cool with what you're doing, it's cool. I know half these people on YouTube are just conning people. They figured out a con. They figured out an angle. YouTube allows it. The online platform allows it. You got guys that's been married 20, 30 years that's telling young dudes about red pill stuff, and they're married. You got guys telling guys you shouldn't marry nobody but a 9 or a 10, and they wife the father's thing from a 9 or a 10. Right? You got Jordis and Peterson uh, telling women that they don't look a certain way on, on, on Twitter, and no disrespect to who he's married to, but I don't know if he's looking at who he's married to telling those women that. She might be a hell of a woman, but we just off the look, I don't know about that. But he knows his audience wants to hear that, right? Because he's part of the little red pill, you know, conservative, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So he has to do that now. Because if not, he's just a professor from Canada. And nobody don't give a damn about what's going on in Canada anyway. So you got to understand this is what's going on. Everybody's a scammer, except the guys I'm running with that sell courses. But everybody else selling courses is a scammer. So my guys, they're not scammers, right? And I got a bunch of people talking about everybody being scammers, which is not a solution to their problem. But they want me to be the voice of going out to everybody that's a scammer. But when I got done doing that, we cut the computer off, they life in the same position it was. And when they come back the next time to listen to the next video about everybody being a scammer, nothing about their life has changed. But I never look at the guys I'm running with that are also selling courses. They're not scammers, it's everybody else. It's a scammer. And their courses are worth nothing, except the people I'm running with. This is the type of stuff. It's a con. I see straight through it. I'm cool with it because I know you ain't going to never get rid of con men. That's the game. Right? And I'm not against the game, so I'm not, I can't be against them. So that's what I want you to understand. So just what I taught you on YouTube, for fairly for free, all you got to do now, which is going to cost you, is take the time to iterate this, roll it out, but like I said, you just got to live with yourself being able to do it. But it's not that difficult to do. YouTube is so big. There's so many people on it. You'll find a niche to do this around. In fact, some niches are so big, like the political space, the religious space, the relationship space. Those niches are so big, they can hold literally thousands of people. Right? They're never going to run out of room and money in that space. So you don't got to worry about being the next person. Those spaces are so big, they're never going to run out of people. Million dudes on here got relationship channels. Talking about nothing. Right. Dudes that's not in relationships want to hear about relationships, but you're not in a relationship. So why would you care? I, I just want somebody to you know get mad at. So that's what I want you to understand. We're going to do the comments. Maybe we're going to get up on out of here because we got the 50 minute mark. So Miss Miss uh, Cherie says people don't want solutions. Dave is too hard for them to implement. So it's easy to get them to come. Yeah, definitely. And like I said before, we live in a world where, the, where where my enemy has to be external. It can't be me i can't have any participation in what's going on in my life that i don't like so and also i can't be responsible for what has happened in the past it got to be somebody else's fault now do things happen to people that they can't control yes but once you get a certain age you got to start realizing that your life is a result of what you've been doing it's what you've been observing it's the thoughts inside your head and it's your actions in the world right but nobody wants, that's not profitable, except like maybe if we're in a Alcoholics Anonymous. Or maybe if we're at a personal development retreat where people have paid 20, 30,000 to hear that kind of talk because they realize I need to get to the next level. Average person is never going to get to that point in their life. 
So they don't want to hear that. This world is run by getting everybody to believe that their enemy is external. That's how they run the world. So L.I. says it's part of my dark persuasion course. Not specifically. So Anthony Bowden says, a uh, perfect example is K.S. Ivers, Logan Paul, boxing, boxing each other in a grudge match that made them both eight figures. Yeah, uh, Logan Paul going to the boxing was a genius move by him. Can't take nothing from him. Genius move. He's going to make way more money doing that than he ever would have did doing social media. But he used social media to build himself up to go do that. Genius move by that dude. Because the, the America wants a great white hope. That's never going to go away. So he just played that role. Genius move by him and his team. Can't take nothing from him. So Erica says, these folks will build whole channels reacting from other men's content as well. Yeah, it is. That is. And I didn't think that YouTube would allow that when I first started seeing it happen. But YouTube has allowed it. We see some of the biggest channels on YouTube are reaction channels. I didn't think YouTube would allow that because it's not original created content. But you do get that. You get, I'm going to let Erica do videos. And then I'm just going to react to all of Erica's videos. I don't never make a video. I just react to all her videos. It is in between reacting maybe like a television show, but I didn't think YouTube would allow that either. But like, I don't, you know, you got people right now, Erica, and it took a lot of work to do it, so I can't take away from them, but they've gotten Kevin Samuel's old videos and they're just doing audio of it with a screenshot and they're running it like that's their channel. But it's all Kevin Samuel's content, right? So they're monetizing his old content. I don't know if his estate knows how to go after that and block it. And it's just, we're going to piggyback off the content that he made to make money. Same thing when he was alive. I'm going to react to Kevin Samuels' videos. I'm not going to do any of my own content. It's just weird, but that's just the era we're in now. You know, it's just really interesting. So Cherie says, I wish I had a lack of exit to get in the bad time YouTube game. I'll make a killing. I just can't do it. I have to be asleep at night. I feel you. you know, everybody's different. Everybody got their own value systems and things of that nature. So it is what it is. But, you know, YouTube provides the opportunity. Because these people that are really big at this stuff, they know this stuff is a con. Like, they can't, nobody, they don't believe in this stuff. It just makes them money. And they know their audience is so blind to what's going on, uh, they'll never be able to see the difference. So Roscoe says, Marxism con is a good con game to use on folks who fell in America. Yeah, Roscoe, I don't know any Marxist or communist inside of the United States. Not one. This is the United States. You know, I don't know where is it, where are the Marxists and communists inside the United States? That's like saying Obama was a, a socialist. Obama was funded by Wall Street. Like this, this stuff don't really add up to like how money actually moves around the world. You know, Obama was probably a corporatist more than anything else. But you know, Obama was a socialist, socialist funded by Wall Street. Why would Wall Street fund a socialist? Wall Street is all about private ownership. It don't add up to like, it don't add up to cash flows and inflows and outflows of capital. But this is the kind of stuff, because the average person, I'm not talking about you, if you ask them to define communism, they couldn't. They go by what somebody told them on YouTube. You know, so that's something I learned is that most people don't know what the hell they're talking about. It is not that I disagree with what they're talking about. They just don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're just talking. You know, that's why I don't do barbershop conversations. So Erica says, David Harris Jr. does it and it gets low numbers. I don't know who that guy is. I need to check him out. Yeah, Ray Gunn says, I never knew there's a gender war between black men and women until I got on YouTube in real life. I don't see one. I'm the same way. I never knew I never knew black people had this much of an issue with each other as black people until I got on YouTube because I don't see it in the real world. But I realize a lot of stuff I see on YouTube, I don't see in the real world because I move around the real world all the time. Most people don't even talk to me. They just don't. Most people don't even talk to me in real life. Most people I see in the real life, they're looking at their phone. So what I had to realize is that, you know, I talked about before, we're very much in the metaverse. This artificial reality where I can be whoever I want to be. Because when I'm moving around the city, most people are looking at their phone or they're trying not to engage with somebody. So. People now on the internet that are super, super aggressive, it's just interesting to me. Because they're not like that in real life. So Tori Helm says a lot of black people are making money to get in the community as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it's profitable. You know, anti-blackness is profitable in South America. It'll, make, it'll get you elected. It's profitable. You know, so I get it. It's profitable. 
because people already believe this. So you're not making them believe something they don't already believe. They already believe it. You know, that's just how it is. So they they tap into what they already believe. You know, and that's their role. Vince, yeah, I appreciate the $10, man. So Roscoe says that dude's trace, trace took, took looks 20 years old. Then he did 20 years older than he did two years ago. So Miss Lena's office by AMC must have taken a hole in him, similar to me, Kevin. Yeah, but Trey said he made over a million dollars on that. So in his mind, it must be worth it because how else was he going to make a million dollars? He was in the military. So this is a guy in the military made a million dollars off that whole AMC situation. He said he was able to pay off his mom's house. He was able to pay off his house and also buy a car. So in his mind, it's all worth it. You know, because he may look at it like, you don't have to watch the videos. You could have cut them off. You know, so it is what it is. Ray Gun, man, I appreciate the $2. Uh, GC says, Charleston White knows at the same time I got to do it real life. Yeah, Charleston White trying to blow up doing the same format. And let's see how long it works for him. You know, he's, he's, he's doing the shock jock thing, you know, and hopefully it works for him. So it was reported that Gen Z trusts YouTube more than any other platform too. I believe that. I 100% believe that. You know, YouTube's biggest audience is young people. You know, so this is their, this is their platform. So I believe it, you know. And so it, it is what it is. And YouTube has very little to no, um, I don't know what you want to call it, st broadcast standards. You know, you can pretty much put anything on here that you want to put on here. I mean, it's just some wild stuff on here. It's just, I don't, I never could understand why I would, after a hard day of work, or even while I was working, jump on YouTube and just listen to just craziness. But, you know, everybody's, what's going on inside their head is different. So it's just, it is what it is. You know, it's a market for everything in this world. You know, if you got enough people in it. So appreciate everybody for coming through. So really want to encourage you, just follow the script. I can't guarantee you. But I'm very confident that you can make money just following this script. Because well, now that you know it, just look in your environment on YouTube and see how many people are following this script. I'm not against people identifying problems. But if we just keep problem, 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 no solution that's actually real, no applicable solutions, no teaching, no leading, just every day I'm going to show you something negative on YouTube with no solution at the end of it. You know, it's just they're really running this script. And they're the voice of people. I'm not the voice of anybody. I speak for myself. I don't speak for anybody else. I don't want to speak for anybody else, right? People got the ability to speak for themselves. They grown. So that's really much what we're going to talk about. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.